So if people don't know what the gifting is, go on. Sorry. Okay, so if people don't know what their gifting is, like I said, ask the Lord first, but be in a community, be in a congregation, and, and see just where, like I said, the way I figured out that I was good at speaking in public is because I enjoyed it and no one else did. But that's part of it. But I think that just being in a community of other believers and just praying before the Lord and asking Him, I think we, we don't meditate on His Word enough. Uh, honestly, I know I don't. So I think that's a, a simple answer. Look for the longer answer last week. Mm -hmm. So, Yes, Andre. I just wanted to make sure I heard you correctly. Yeah. So when you speak about the gift of speaking in tongues and interpretation, that's one thing. But speaking in tongues, as Paul says, he wishes that everybody would speak. Ah, yes. So when we talk, this is from last week as well. So last week there are actually four different types of speaking in tongues. Four different types. So uh, I would say go back and look at last week's. But there is if uh, praying in tongues. Uh, we yeah. So for those of you who don't know, I went to Oroberts University. We called it a prayer language. Um, we pray, we would pray in tongues and then pray with understanding, and just ask the Lord to interpret what we were praying to ourselves. So there's praying in private in tongues. There's praying when it's a gift for others in a congregational setting. There's also praying in another language where somebody in the in the audience actually understands that language and it's a sign to them. Uh, that also happens still to this day. So um, so there's several. You'll have to go back to last week to see the rest. Yeah, Wayne. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's one thing that some people say is uh, stir up the gift that is within you. Yes. Now some people think. What do you think about that? Okay, stirring up the gift. Well, that's because it's a quote from scripture. Yeah. Stir up the gift that's within you. So there is this. There's several other verses actually. Um, I actually didn't look them all up, but there's about four or five different verses that seem to say that that um, the giftings can atrophy. I think it's like any natural gift. If you don't use it, you lose it. If, uh, for those of you who've studied a foreign language, you don't use it, you lose it. And there's this, there's this sense that, and even like the difference between Acts chapter 4 and Acts chapter 2, where they were refilled in Acts chapter 4, and then they went out with boldness. And it was specifically, they were filled specifically to go out and speak with boldness. There was like a specific thing that they were praying for and God answered. Um, so I think that there is there's also a, a scripture that talks about exercising our gifts or exercising our discernment. Um, so I think that there is a place for, for uh, using the gifts that the Lord has given you. And by the way, God has gifted everybody with something. Um, I know that some feel that they're not given it at all, but that is also not biblical. We read that scripture last week. So everybody's gifted with something. Anyone else? No? Okay. Oh, this one is right behind you, Paul. Um, in Scripture it says, These signs shall follow those who believe. Mm -hmm. So that really is anybody yep. to do signs, wonders, yeah. and miracles. That's right. And, Ye and Yeshua said... You don't have to be an apostle. No, absolutely not. No. <laughs> don't have to be a sent, sent one. So... That's correct. These signs shall follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out spirits, pick up deadly servants. You know, we see we see that in the book of Acts as well. We see the fulfillment of all those things. And um, not just by the twelve. So...